commanding, we humble our hearts before you. We are so aware, Lord God, tonight of our insufficiency. Yes, Lord. Yes. And the great sustaining grace of God. Lord, we learned a long time ago that without me, we are nothing mighty in God. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Father, we thank you for what has been accomplished in this meeting. Thank God. Lord, there's much more to be accomplished. Yes. And it's too much for us, so we're looking to you. So, Lord, have your own way tonight. Yes. Over against every opposing force, we pray, Lord God, and enlighten, darken the minds, and take away, Lord God, the grossness of heart. May the word be the great hammer tonight, Almighty God, and may it be uplifting and edifying. Give an anointing to your servant, Almighty God, and Amen. give us clear deliverance, Lord God, we might speak those things you would have us speak. Refrain from what you would have us not speak. Amen. Magnify yourself, Lord God, in all that we said to you. We won't fail to praise your great name, because we ask you in the name of Christ. All you say. Amen. The book of Acts, chapter 20, beginning with verse 27. For I have not shunned to declare unto you the, all of the counsel of God. Take heed therefore to yourselves, and to all the flock over thee, which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. To feed the church of God, which he hath purchased Amen. with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch. And remember, Amen. that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one <coughs> night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God. Oh, Jesus. And to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. And to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Let me read that very second verse again. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all of them which are sanctified. My thought this evening, a constructive gospel. Spiritual construction. The pure gospel, if accepted, is always constructive. Amen. Without fail. Amen. The gospel is capable of building up anyone. Amen. If properly presented and properly accepted, it will build. Amen. You know, Paul here had been in Ephesus laboring, and this is his rather victorious address to these people. Gather the elders together. Said that now I'm not shy to declare unto you all the counsel of God. It's sad today. We're living in a time when people must try to survive off of a hack gospel. Mm -hmm. oh, We're living in a time for one reason or another, people are refusing to preach a full gospel. Yes, Jesus. They are omitting essential phases of the gospel. Oh, yeah. Let me get this. It is impossible for us to be complete 
as a saint or as a church and omit any phase of the gospel. Amen. Amen. The enemy has done a great work in these last days. It is much as people have so involved themselves and got themselves in such a mess. They are in effect of forcing the ministry who will not allow it to omit certain phases of the gospel. Yes. Had gospel, had saints. So Paul says, I didn't come to you for the purpose of personal gain. He said, I've come to no man's silver gold, salary, uh, my personal sustenance was not an issue. Amen. He said, listen, I've not shunned and declared unto you the whole counsel of God. Amen. Now you get this. Sooner or later, if you are to be an acceptable saint of God, and yea, acceptable of God in the judgment, you must have a full gospel preaching. Amen. Amen. You know, this one is a sad situation. You can listen to these religious radio programs around the clock. And it's almost like a broken record. The essential phases, the building up phase of the gospel is woefully omitted. Oh, yes. For whatever reason, if there is any phase of the gospel omitted, it will fail to produce that which is acceptable to God. Amen. Amen. So Paul said, I preach the Lord. Regardless of the consequences, whether people accepted it or rejected it, I preached it all. Yes. You want to live it in a time when it's too late to fear the faces of man. Oh, yeah. It's too late to make merchandise of the people and preach the gospel for personal gain or to satisfy the whims of the people. Amen. You know, they want, you can preach certain phases of the gospel and there are people who have been going to church for years and they are astounded to even know that that's in the Bible. Amen. So Paul said, I have not shot He said, now, I am free and clear of the blood of all men. Amen. If we are unkept, we will allow people to back us in the corner and many people will be in the judgment with their hands dripping with blood yeah. because for whatever reason, they refuse to declare unto the people the whole counsel of God. Now, that is nothing upbuilding in anything less than that. So as Paul was leaving, usually the people's final remarks are the things that spoke to heart to them and they wishes you to remember most. For so now I'm going to commend you. I've done all that I know to do. Now, I'm going to commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Amen. 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 Now, get this, dear one. We want all of you to know tonight that regardless to your natural weakness, your background, your previous involvement, the word of God's grace is able to build you up. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now there are people who have had one failure after another and have almost gone to despair because they feel that I've tried and that my situation is hopeless. Just the other day, a young man walked out of church. And I sensed the teaching. So I sent one of the brethren after He said, look, he says, I feel, I feel time and time again. I'm just tired of it. But they want you to get this time. You don't need to go to despair. Amen. God's word is able to build you up. Amen. Even in a dark and benighted time, in which we're living. Amen. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, now, the word of God is indiscriminate. There are not certain people with certain backgrounds and 
uh, certain uh, intellects, but the Word of God is capable of building all of us up. Amen. Amen. It does build up those who will receive it. Amen. Amen. So we're not concerned about the, the weakness of your character. Amen. Or uh, your past failures, or your past involvements. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, read please. Know ye not that, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God before and before after salvation. We not be not deceived. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. Neither fornicators. Nor idolaters. Nor idolaters. Nor adulterers. Nor, nor effeminate. Nor abused of themselves with mankind. Nor thieves. Nor covetous. Nor drunkards. Nor revilers. Nor extortioners. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. But listen. Read. And such were some of you. And such were some of you. I thank God that Paul knew his grammar. He said, such were some of you. Amen. Anything that pertains to sin as it relates to a Christian is always in the past. Amen, brother. Amen. 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 Such were some of you. Everything that relates to sin, praise our God, about your life should be infinitely in the background. Amen. 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 We are living in a time where false preachers are so they sin with the saints. And so the best you can do is go on living, do the best you can until you die. And to get on your knees every night and say, God, forgive me for all of the wrong that I've done today. But the word of God, he is expressly different. He says, such were some of you. Amen. Anything that you've done that pertains to sin should be in the past. It's not the present experience of a saint of God to sin. Amen. That's why people are not built up in false religion today. Why? Because they are not receiving the word of God that's capable of building them up. Amen. There is nothing in battle. There is nothing in false religion to build up a person. That's why God has come out of her, my people, Amen. and be not partake of us. There's nothing there to build you up. Amen. Everything in false religion is depressing. Amen. You don't need to pay a preacher $40,000 a year to teach you how to sin. <laughs> Thank God you were doing that before you got saved. That's why you came to church in the first place. Right. Amen. You don't need to pretend you must sin. If you knew that, that's why you came to God. All right. Amen. 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 such word, some of you. <coughs> Thank God I'm so glad. Amen. That we have people here tonight of every background. We have people here tonight who are involved in everything imaginable. Yeah. But thank God, it's in the past. Yeah. Amen. Hey. It's a new yeah. 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 It's what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But the blood covered. Yeah. 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 Covered by the blood, kept in the sea, yeah. and that's to be yeah. remembered yeah. against us yeah. no more. Praise God. Yeah. 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 I guess somebody might want to take odds with the young man about the theology of the song. He says, if God save me, I'm not going to say it anymore. That's Bible. Yeah. Thank God when the woman was caught in a duffy. What did Jesus say? Go and sin no more. Amen. If you can't help the sinning, that sin would have been a ridiculous statement. Amen. Amen. Jesus said it would not have given a command that's incapable of being kept. Amen. 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 Go and sin no more. Amen. Amen. That's the gospel that Jesus taught. That's the kind of gospel that builds you up. Praise the living God. You get this. He said, such were some of you. But what? But ye are washed. Now he changed in tense. Now he's talking about the present. Ye are what? Ye were a dozen fornicators, liars, thieves, but ye are what? Praise the Lord. He's congregating here. Amen. Praise the living God. Read. Read on. But ye are sanctified. Ye are sanctified. Right now. Here and now. Amen. Amen. Well, this says sanctification is a progressive thing and somewhere just between life and death when you get real right we fall off the street. <laughs> Maybe you are forever heading that direction never arriving. Isn't that sad? Isn't it sad, dear one? That kind of gospel cannot build you up. 
Amen. Then the sanctification is not an experience that you can enjoy here and now. It's a thing in the infinite uh, future that you are constantly uh, working toward. Amen. A, a, a progressive thinking, and, but Paul said, it's a here and now experience. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. 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 Thank you either fit for the kingdom or you aren't. Amen. And sanctification makes you fit for it. Amen. That's why Paul said, What? But ye are washed. Ye are washed. But ye are sanctified. Ye are sanctified. But ye are justified. Ye are justified. You, 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 you've had two words for grace. You're sanctified and justified. Amen. 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 Ye are justified. Ye are justified. In the name of the Lord. In Jesus. the name of the Lord. And by the Spirit of, the, of our God, the, what you were in sin and debauchery, but the Word has built you up. Amen. Amen. See, you might be hunted by your background as far as the enemy is concerned. You might try to bring accusation and get you in uh, mental bondage. Amen. But you don't have to bother with that, dear one. Amen. God has a Word of, of His grace. That is a power and an anointing behind it that is capable of building you. Amen. And you have to walk around every day wondering whether or not you can make it. Amen. If you receive God's word, it will invariably glory you. Thank God. Amen. Now, you get it. the word of His grace. Now, everybody that has a Bible and give you a little 20-minute essay on Sunday morning and not preach God's word. Amen. See, you get this night. For it to be God's word along any line, it has to be as God intended. Amen. See, anything other than that is not God's word even though you read it. Amen. See, everybody that reads passages from the Bible <coughs> are not preaching God's word. Amen. Amen. See, Amen. God inspires his word because he knows what he meant when he said it. Amen. You get that? Amen. See, you know what? That's what we're going to be judged by. That's why judgment is left to the Son. Why? Because it's his word. Amen. Amen. And he knows what he intended. I don't care what the doctrine is. I don't care what the standard is. Christ had something in mind when he preached it. Yeah, that's right. Amen. People might be confused about it. People might have that very idea, but Christ knows what he had in mind. And you get this. Amen. He's going to judge you by what he had in mind when he Amen. said it. Amen. 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 That's what God's word is all about. What Christ intended when he preached it. Amen. I'm going to tell you something tonight. Thank God you better quit listening to the ideas of me and not know what Christ meant. Amen. You better try to get the Amen. mind of Christ regarding these things that seem to be so controversial. Amen. Amen. Because Christ has something in mind. We, you, some of us might be confused, but he wasn't confused at all. Amen. By the word of his grace. By the word of his grace. See, there is no promise that anything else is capable of building you up. Amen. Only the word of his grace. Amen. And it's only the word of his grace when it's preached under his inspiration and as Christ meant. Amen. 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 The one is a sad situation that people are placing their never dying souls in the keeping of individuals who don't even know what it's all about. That's it. Their eternal souls are hanging in the balance with men who don't even, by their own admission, have an experience of salvation. So how in the world can they deliver the word of God's grace, which is capable of building up an individual, and by their own admission, they are sinning every more than 30 days? In Revelation chapter 8, this Take a passage there yes. All right. Can you read from it, please? Which chapter? Uh, prepare yourself to go. What verse is that? All right. Verse one, please. Six verses. Read it. And the seven angels. That's what we want. The seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves. Prepared. It takes a prepared ministry to deliver God's word and build up God's people. Amen. That's why we have so many failing, weak, and anemic saints of God, because what they are receiving.
anything is incapable of building them up. Amen. Amen. The one when you amen, take this sacred trust, you need to sense the gravity of the responsibility involved. Heard the sister today mentioned it and heard it several times. She's built to move out and submit the ministry to another. But she senses that those souls will be there under the auspices of somebody. And if by any means someone for nail their way in, who's incapable of feeding them the pure word, all those souls will walk into everlasting darkness. Because you are in effect with Jesus. So these ministers prepare themselves to go. Why? The seven angels. What? Down through the gospel days, God knew what the church would face. He knew it would take a prepared ministry to prepare the people in each age to survive the onslaught of the death. You see, the one, you cannot prepare yourself for this battle with just some little essay. There has to be a method for the hour. Amen. Now, in this particular time, Satan is coming with great wrath. God knew that. God knew how intense the efforts of the devil would be to destroy the church because he recognized he had but a short time to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So since God knows that, he has a prepared ministry to prepare you for that onslaught. Amen. Right. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You see, you, want, you don't just preach something off the top of your head or, or warm up something, praise our God, and, and dash it on the things of God. Amen. Brother, time to do serious for that. Yes, amen. Brother, souls are hanging between life and death. Amen, amen. Yes. The next move could be a fatal move. Yes. They need something from God to sustain them yes. and to build them up. Amen. And everything that comes from the lips of men are not capable of building up men. Yes. Amen. The people of God. Thank you. So God knew that. He did the seven angels, which only mean ministers. They prepared themselves for glory, brother. I'm going to tell you something. That's why congregation and groups are seeking everlastingly. Why? They don't have anyone prepared to blow the message that will hold them up in time of peace. And we were talking about man and the pressure and the confusion and the conflicts one after the other. Brother, you don't just do any, any, man go, brother. You've got to know what moves make that. Some souls who came to this meeting have things waiting on them when they get home. You don't know what you're going to face. You, can fa- you might face something, brother, that could be uh, climactic to your whole experience of your church. You don't know what to look for. And listen, if the ministry here don't sound clear notes, yes. amen, God might have a message that's prepared just for what you are going to do. You don't know what your crisis might be, even before you get home. But I guarantee you, if you listen to the message, it'll prepare you. Amen. An anointed message will prepare you. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you need to give the most honest yeah. what you hear. Yeah. And not allow it to slip. Why? Because yeah. it prepares you for something. Yeah. So for us to prepare you, we must be prepared. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Brother, that's why if we're talking about the sixth year and the first year. That's why they, they were so meticulous. They would lay hands suddenly on no man. Why? Because yeah. they sent the gravity of this responsibility. They realized if a person get behind God's desk, I'll uh, make a false claim incapable of feeding God's people, many people will sink off in the everlasting doctrine because of their inability. Amen. Amen. They prepared themselves to blow. They prepared themselves to blow. You don't just get up and not blowing any kind of wild news to God's people. Amen. You don't just try to tickle people fancy or able to do something to uh, satisfy their whims. Amen. Brother, they have a message. Listen, none of us have been this way before. None of us have. None of us are able to foresee the future. Yeah. You don't know what the future holds you, but God does. Yeah. God does. God yeah. knows the message that you need to make you acceptable to him. Amen. God knows that. God knows your, your, your difficulties. God knows your thoughts are far wrong. Yeah. He knows what's needed to forestall. Amen. Uh, he knows when to uh, put the angel in the way with a yeah. flaming sword to offer your course. God knows that. Amen. Because why? He knows what's impending. Amen. Amen. So God will send a message through a prepared ministry if you'll take heed and humble your heart Amen. and will prepare you. Otherwise, there is no way to prepare yourself otherwise. Amen. Amen. There is no way to be pure.
built up in the kingdom other than by the word of God great. And it had to be the word. Amen. 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 Because you can read good books. Amen. You can hear essays. You can listen to records. But there is no other need whereby God has provided to build up people and this church, but by the word of his grace. Amen. Amen. So that's why the angel had to prepare themselves a little. Why? Because thank God they had to be certain. They had to blow a clear sound. Amen. That's why there's so much confusion in the land today, brother. Clear notes are not being blown. Amen. People are left, amen, to, uh, to satisfy their own whims. Mm -hmm. It's a sad situation, brother. A preacher can preach a message under the anointing of God, and I don't see it that way. I mean, there is no respect for the most part to the ministry. Why? Because there are those who have allowed that trumpet to be muted. Though they are blown on certain sounds, and they left it to the people to do it right in their own eyes. Oh, yeah. And that's what happened during Samuel's time. Brother, they had no, 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 no king, no, no prophet, amen, who declared the whole counsel of God. So they were left to do what's right in their own eyes. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. When people are left to do what's right in their own eyes, they will invariably go wrong. Amen. The flesh will always come out on top, brother. Why? Because people are going to fail the flesh. If they are left to themselves, they're going to fail the flesh, brother. And you write that down in your little book tonight. Amen. Even when people are confused, they're like, for the most part, they are not going to give God the benefit of the doubt. And sometimes God leaves some things nebulous, not clear. Why? Because he wants to see what's in you. Amen. You remember what David said over Psalm 17? He's tried me in the night. And he's known me. In other words, he tried me in dark times when I didn't really know which way to go. And he tried my reins. You see, you see which way I'm sending. See, God sometimes refuses to make things clear to you just to see what you're going to do. Yeah. Here, let me say something. Else. If you love God as you ought, even if you are uncertain about the situation, you'll give God the benefit of the doubt. Amen. Amen. When you might go this way or that way, and you're not clear, you'll give God the benefit of the doubt. Amen. When you say, oh, I'm so confused, I don't know what to do. Well, if you don't know what to do, give God the benefit of the doubt. And still right. stay silent. Amen. Well, one person says one thing and one person says another. I'm, I'm just totally confused. Give God the benefit of the doubt. Amen. If you love God, like you say you do, praise all God, love your soul, give God the benefit of the doubt, and you can know you're clear. Yes, yes. Yes. You, might, you, might, you might miss something that, that possibly you could enjoy, but give God the benefit of the doubt. Amen. 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 With regards to the angels, prepared themselves to blow. You are, in effect, what you eat. Well, if you feed people strife, you want to have a whole uh, bunch of strivers. That's right, brother. Whatever you feed people, brother, they're going to invariably be that. Turn to First Peter chapter 2, if you will. Verses 1 and 2. Amen. That's why you need a pure gospel. Amen. That's why you need that why people are dying with people are being fed strife from the beginning to the end. That doesn't build up anyone, brother. That doesn't build up an individual. That doesn't build up a group. Amen. That's why we're here, brother. We're here to feed people. Praise the God. Amen. Amen. The pure word of God was capable of building them up. Thank God. Building them in the earth. Read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. And all guile. And all guile. And hypocrisies. And hypocrisies. And envies. And envies. And all evil speaking. And all evil speaking. As newborn babes. As newborn babes. Desire the sincere milk of the word. I don't know if any of you have had the experience of seeing a baby when he's born. I don't know. I guess, I'm sure God teaches them somehow in the womb, I guess. But they come to the popping lips. I mean, you see, you see, they can't get enough. God made this analogy because it's pity. Brother, when a person gets to this day, you don't have to worry about offending them to you. You don't have to worry about feeding them the word. Amen. Why? Because they are hungry for the word. Amen. See, many times we, 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 if you're trying to be too tactful, uh, you can go too far to the left. Mm -hmm. Amen. Brother, when people get truly saved, when people get truly saved, they are hungry. Amen. I remember.
remember some years ago, they were telling me about an individual who was a part of the Masonic Order. And he was not aware that uh, God's church was against secret orders. And uh, so he said, uh, I understand that uh, the Masonic uh, 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 God is a secret order. And uh, that's right, uh, you want to be the Lord. You know, like what? Even when, when the women like him, I'm doing it. You know, whatever, whatever my involvement, when the light comes from the word of God, when God pure word comes, then it's there. I'll drop it the heart. That's the attitude of a real born again saint of God. You don't want to bring anything over into the new life that God cannot smile upon. Amen. You are not trying to avoid it, are trying to circumvent it, go around and you are trying to know more about God's requirement. Yes, you are desiring, it is a, it's a personal longing for the sincere miracle of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Why? Because you sense this, that it's going to take the word of God to build you up. Amen. And a real thing of God, they want all of the strength that they can accumulate because they sense the need for it. Amen. And there is no way to be built up otherwise but by the word of God. Amen. And they want you, it's good sometimes to be general, but there you sometimes you need to specify, just like Jesus did. Sometimes Jesus preached in generalities, and there were times he specified. Why? Because he knew the people needed it. He knew that their love for God needed to be tested. And the only way it could be tested was by touching things that were near and distant. That's what he did. And brother, even sometimes. Thanks for God, cry and whine and bad and pray and come back and give me more. <laughs> Amen. I thank God. It, 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 it's not good to me, but it's good for me, so give me more. Amen. You know, like, Amen. And that's the attitude of every true thing of God, brother. Just, you don't have to worry about running away anybody's words. Amen. They have a real, genuine, and experience of God. If God has added anyone, you don't have to worry about running them away with the word. Amen. Just Amen. preach the word. Not ideas and opinions, but the word. Amen. 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 That newborn baby desire. Amen. You don't have to worry about being offensive because that's what they desire. You don't offend a person with what they desire. That's right. Amen. 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 See, we allow the enemy to give us a false concept of the thing. Yeah. And we give, oh, how am I getting this? And you live all night trying to find some diplomatic way to approach the situation when all you need to do is preach the word. Yeah. Amen. 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 Trying to find a side door to go in and come up on the blind side and all that kind of thing. Preach the word. Preach the word of God. Yeah. And leave the result with God. Yeah. And if you don't be the word, whatever you build up, it won't be. God will have nothing to do with it. If you build up the city, praise our God, you're building in vain. Amen. Because God is not the architect. Amen. 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 All right. Now, the text said, let us read that. Verse 32. Now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Now, there is an ability in the word to build you up. Amen. Now, that, that's not even the Bible. That's conclusive. Yes. The word is able to build you up. Amen. Build you up and make you equal to the task. Yes. Whatever situation you might chance to face in life, the word of God is able to build you up and make you equal to it. You don't need to add put the, you don't need to uh, add put in the additives in it. If you don't need to, you don't need, you don't need to, to streamline it, just give them the word. And the word has, amen, a constructive, amen, element in it. It's able to build you up. It is a son that the word of God does not build up. Who do we think we are, anyway, to delete certain things from the Word of God? Amen. And use our personal ideas and tactics because we feel this oh might God. be a kid and all that kind of thing. If Jesus had that idea, brother, I'm telling you the truth, we've been in the mess today. When Jesus preached the Word of God, there came a time all of this multitude that was following said, Oh, this is a hard thing, we'll be better. The Word of God said, Many of them walked with him no more. Why? Because they refused the word, and Jesus knew if they were to be built up, they had to have the word. Yes. Amen. So he had to sacrifice them one way or the other. 
Amen. So in the best interest of the church, he sacrificed them by giving them the word. Amen. Amen. God. So otherwise, he would have been defeating his own purpose. So praise our God. And, he, he went, and, and, and uh, when he got down to his original dwelling, he said, where are you going? He said, where can we go? We want to be built up. And you got the word. <laughs> and there's no way to be built up that we got to stay in the pride. Praise God. Amen. Uh, years ago, sometimes we make sure they put a lot of pepper in it and you know, kind of give it a lot of spice. Amen. It was, it was real good, but it was too hot for the children. So they just drink and eat uh, them drink water. <laughs> you're too good to refuse and too hot to eat. <laughs> this is in a, in a bind. That's why the word of God is too good to refuse and sometimes it's too hot to chew on. We just look at God. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. Amen. Amen. Now, the purpose of the word is to build you up, you get this now, and make you eligible for the inheritance. Now look at the tenor of this text. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of the grace which is able to build you up. Now you get this now. <coughs> your inheritance is not determined by your initial acceptance of Christ. It's able to build you up what? Read it. Able to build you, up build you up and to give you an inheritance. And to give you an inheritance. Your, your inheritance.
be an ass. And the others are trying to prove that you don't have the work. Well, you shouldn't be, you, you're not eligible because you're not going for it. You didn't do anything for money either. So they go on trying to prove their eligibility, amen, and their worthiness. Amen! amen. Well, by the same token, and then they take the probate court, and the judge determines who's worthy. If everybody gets themselves an ass. Well, and the same thing spiritually. Everybody wants to be an ass just because they go to church. One day they shook the preacher's hand, and they were baptized in water, so I'm an ass. So, oh, no, it doesn't go that way. The judge said, no, 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 no. You're not, you're not a legal ass. Praise the Lord God. You didn't walk with me in white. Amen. You didn't walk with me in white, but you're not. Praise the Lord God. was not the right. Amen. You're not worthy. Amen. They shall walk with me in white. Amen. Amen. Your inheritance is among those that are saying, I want to be where my inheritance is. I see Amen. Amen. Thank God I want to be where my inheritance is. Right. Among, and that's where it is indeed. Among them that are sanctified. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 12, if you will. Read. Giving thanks unto the Father. Giving thanks unto the Father. Which has made us meet to be part Which has made us meet. Which has made us eligible. Come on. Which has made us meet to Listen. be partakers. Which has made us meet. Which has made us proper. Which has made us fitting. And you get this. Which has processed us. Which has done a proper work on us. To make us meet for the inheritance. Amen. You, you want, see, we have most of our religious groups today teaching, well, if you accept Christ, you are automatically an heir. Regardless. But Peter says, the end of your faith. Amen. Consider the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul, not the beginning. See, you want, your salvation is not depending on your initial step, but the end of your faith. Amen. Amen. See, there is a lot between the beginning and the end that might uh, disqualify you. Oh, yeah. Amen. So I want you to notice here the, 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 the language of this verse. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Mm -hmm. Do you see how discriminant he is here? Amen. Thank God the inheritance, amen, uh, is given to those who are the saints walking in the light of God. Amen. Amen. The word of God is that people today who, who, who are, are walking in darkness and deceiving themselves into feel that they are as much air as anybody. But brother, <laughs> walking in light makes you eligible, makes you meet for this inheritance. Amen. And may God help us. And if we get one degree behind light, it disqualifies you. Amen. Amen. You see, the one, as God unfolds his word, amen, you see, until the light comes, there is a degree of innocence. But when light comes, if you refuse it, thereafter you walk in darkness and you cancel your inheritance. Oh One brother says, you're safe till the next message comes. <laughs> amen. God give more light, anybody you walk in more light. What did Jesus tell the Jews? <laughs> amen. See, if you refuse the light, thereafter you walk in darkness. See, now, if you Amen. did not know, if you were in God, then you'd have no sin. But you say, I know, now your sins are up to you. Why? Because you say that you're in light. You say that your eyes are open, Amen. then you're responsible. Amen. That's what the response, the gospel does. The gospel comes to make us responsible. Amen. If God awakens you along any line, Regardless of what it involves, how low it might bring you, however it might revolutionize your life, if God gives you light, you must walk. You don't pray about it, you walk in it. Amen. See, many people strive to stall. Amen. Amen. God has troubled them about things. God has given them clear light, but because it would bring them low, because it's such a dramatic decision, amen, they stay in the darkness and say, I'm praying about it. People have come to this gospel, this truth. As I know you're preaching truth. I don't get truth where I am. Amen. And so I said, well then, the word of God gives you a commandment. Well, I'm praying about it. Mm. What God has given you clear light and you're going to pray about it? When you pray after God has shown you light, you are going to get into confusion. About any matter, whatever it might involve, if you uh, essay to pray about it, after God makes it crystal clear, you're going to get confused. Right, because you're not honest. 
What are you seeking if God's already given you life? And God never promised to shine light on our bed more than once. Amen. In the judgment, all that God has to do to us is to have shown the light on your path at least one time. So when people get before God, they can't say, Lord, and they recognize from that moment they could have no rest or no real peace unless they walk in that light. And whatever area that light may come, you get this. When God gives you life, nobody can gain anything. Amen. Now you can try to speak counsel here or there, and you can try to explain it away or stifle your conscience. When God gives you life, when God puts his finger on it, you have something on your hand. Many people have tried to suppress their consciences and tried to close their eyes and get too late. See, close your eyes after you've seen to no avail.
deep and hard and decisive. Are you in a position? Are you in a position tonight? And God can build you. And God can construct you. And bring you to a complete building. Amen. Amen. A magnificent structure. Amen. We don't want to stay on the foundation forever. We've got to work on the superstructure. Yeah. But it's so sad they want. Uh, I, there was a house once near us. I had a thing with him. And the guy had built the first floor. I went about five years later, it's still a basement that we're talking about. And the last time I saw it, it was just a basement. The superstructure was never built. All the foundation was so cute. But they didn't want to go through the pain and the involvement of building a real superstructure. There was pain and expense and labor involved. And the same thing spiritually. They want many people build a beautiful foundation, become flowers, start, but the building process. When the word of God began to come, they're able to build them up. They reject it. Amen, like a spoiled child. He picks what we got. I think yesterday, the girl I saw, uh, Amen, she had some beans and some potatoes, I guess, and a big piece of sack of cake, so she didn't take beans and fish. <laughs> she was eating for the most appealing. That was good. Uh, she thought it was more digestible than calico. That's just the way some people are. Though. You know, they, will, they will eat freely if they can go to dessert. But that's another thing. Amen. It might be difficult to chew and digest, but it will be good. Praise God. It will build you up. Praise it will you up and it will give you an inheritance among those that are sanctified. If you're not ugly, it's a good thing. Why don't you as God is coming to you. See, many people argue against the word of God. I don't know what you're preaching. You know why they're, they're so curious? Because God is saying they're really fighting and they're rebelling against God. Many times God deals with the people before the priest gets there. But they take it out of the priest. It's not the priest. It's the fact that God is showing them. And they're rebelling against God. And we are the object. You have a choice tonight. That's right. If you need help tonight. If you need help tonight. Amen. If there are certain portions of God's word that you have difficulty with, why don't you unbelievable for God? It can end your church. Some people do all right and they get a certain phase of God's word. And they thank so. That will affect your church. That will see if the whole conglomerate Bible is God's word, not just a thing. It has to be complete to be God's word. There are people who really eat some certain days of it. When you come to the day, you turn it on down. That disqualifies you eternally for your journey. Is that the need to There's only one solution. It might be difficult. It might cause a revolution in your life, but there's only one solution. Lord God, I have submitted myself to the word to produce it. I want to be your son. I want to be eligible by my faith because you might be in some of You want to live in a time of Christ by spirit cloud. We don't know what we're going to eat with. Black and red, black on these narrow highways. We don't know what to eat with. We don't know. When I was the poor, one of the gentlemen who was attending the services said, This is what my daughter told you don't know. Get it. How you don't know? You don't know. Your inheritance, whatever it is, might be in this book. Come back up tonight. Not to be back in the show. Now, if you need help tonight, don't delay. Don't delay. Don't delay. If there are certain questions that are going to ask you, find it for them. Don't be hard for God.
handle the I've never I've never had trouble with certain portions of the word. I'm having difficulties. Some things I'm willing to do, but I'm having problems. I'm more these guys will Amen. You've dealt with a certain thing, but there's a drawback. There's a drawback. I, I, I'm dragging my feet. You made it clear, but I'm dragging my feet, Lord. I'm trying to find a way out. There is no way out. You know, some people are just like a tiger in a cage, walking from one side to the other. Such a switch. There is no way out. But God showed you there is no way out. You just be walking everlasting with a vain hope. Uh, I'm trying to hope to find some way. I've been trying to get back to the wild. And some of them walking for 20 years, one in the cage to the other, trying to find a way out. There's no way out. There's no way out. There's no way out. There's only one thing to do is submit, submit, submit. God give me grace to submit. Whatever it be, however it might affect me, give me grace to submit. I want to be clear. I want to be built up. I want to be prepared. Maybe you find some difficulty submitting now, but if you will make a move, God bless you. Lord, uh, it, it, this move seems to be harder by the thought, but it seems to be harder by But if, if you give me grace, I'll do it. Praise God. If you show me, I'll stop it. I'll discontinue it. I'll measure up what everybody thought. I have no drawback but you because my eternity hinges on it. My eternity hinges on it. You know, they want to something about the true word of God that affects people differently than anything else. Yeah. You can go to a thousand churches, but when the word of God is preached, it has a different effect. Why? Because God supports it. God backs it up. It affects you like nothing else does. When it's time to get people the word.